What's up YouTube? Welcome to my latest purchase, which is a storage facility. I paid almost a million dollars and this is all I got for it. Well, and 70 units. Let me show you what we got here. So this is one of our empty units here. It's just a bunch of concrete, steel, and aluminum. And when I took my kids out here, they were only really interested for about three minutes. And they said, Dad, this is boring. Can we leave? <laughs> and for a minute, like my, my heart kind of like sunk a little bit for about a quarter of a second. And then I was like, you know what? This is probably a teachable lesson. I can teach my kids that, hey, having a boring business, there's actually nothing wrong with that. I don't want drama. I don't want to be getting calls in the middle of the night. And when I show them that this boring business brings in like 70 to 80 of these up here up in Canada. They're like, oh wow, really? That's a lot of money. I'm like, yeah, that's why we bought this, right? It's a, it's a cash money making machine. So at that point we made the connection with them that hey, having a boring business is actually a good thing. Um, I'm sure they just want to be YouTubers or whatever uh, video gamers, but this is what we showed them here when we came to the storage facility for the first time. And for people that aren't really aware of you know, storage facilities or why they're, they're a good play, there's a bunch of different reasons why I invested in storage. So I like it because people are not getting less materialistic, they're actually getting more materialistic. They need to hold on to their stuff, okay? So that's the, one of the first reasons. Next reason is going to be that with the cost of housing getting more expensive and interest rates going up right now here in 2022, people are gonna to need to downsize more. So they're gonna be getting smaller properties to put their things in, probably smaller garages or maybe getting into properties that don't even have garages. So they need one of my garages here to go and park their items in, okay? And as places like cities intensify, you know, there is gonna be a need for more storage. Uh, based on how many houses there are in a city and the population of the city, there should be a certain amount of square footage for people that live in that city, just to make sure that they have a place to go store their stuff, all right? So those are some of the reasons why I like storage. Um, it's evaluated on a cap rate basis. So we bought this property here at a 6% cap rate, and we're hoping to add extra units and to increase the rents here. And right in front of me here, we'll keep, uh, we'll keep walking a little bit, but this is where we have a chance to expand here. So there's 70 units here right now, and we had a pre-consultation with the city. They're open to us expanding backwards here as long as we follow proper fire code and uh, have a proper site plan approval and all those different things. So those are just some of the reasons why I invested in storage. It is pretty recession resilient. You know, people are still gonna need to places to store their stuff. I talked to a lot of storage professionals here during COVID and they said, you know what? People didn't cancel their storage. If anything, people's businesses were going bankrupt or they needed to go downsize or pull their stuff out of their business, whether it was a restaurant or what name, what, what have you, and put it into storage. So storage actually thrived and because building costs are more expensive right now, there's a lot of um, building permits on hold for storage. So if you have a storage facility that's already built, you are the one that's in control of the rents, okay? There is a demand, demand keeps going up every single year, so the rents have also gone up by about 20% here during COVID as well. Those are the reasons why I like storage. Now, you're probably curious about what are the construction costs if somebody wanted to build more storage units and what is the process? So, one of the first things that you need to do is you gotta make sure you have a solid base, right? We do unheated storage out here, it's outdoor storage, so really whatever the temperature is outside is whatever the temperature is. So you need to make sure you got your cement slab poured, so whatever your cost of cement's gonna be, and usually the, um, the cement is thicker around the outside just for extra reinforcement, right? And you have all your rebar and that sort of thing too. So right now I'm kind of in that area where we're gonna be looking to expand in the next year or two. And you know, overall the costs and for the quotes that I've been getting, they're in that $50 to $55 per square foot to go build these units, okay? So if you think of like a 10 by 10, you're gonna be at like $5,500. And if you're getting like $125 to $150, a month per rent on that, you know, you're gonna cover your costs in about three years. So that's why I like storage. That's just another reason why it's pretty cheap to build and construct once you have the land and you have the permits and approvals to do that. All right, so what if construction isn't really feasible right now? Like what if there's more supply chain delays and the cost of construction is going up and up and up? Well, another option and something that came with this compound here was a bunch of sea cans. So you can buy one of these sea cans and the price varies depending on the age of the sea can, 
the size of the sea can, the height of the sea can, but these are uh, sea cans that are only a couple years old and they're about $4,500 each for a 20 foot long sea can. And these can rent out for about $150 a month once you have them on site. And when you figure out the payback time, it's about 30 months, okay? So two and a half years you paid up the sea can and now everything you make from there is pure profit. So that's another cool feature because there's a lot of extra space here. We can also rent out parking spots for open parking and storage for we have people that have boats and trailers and RVs and equipment here. So it uh, really is a license to print some cash. So you're probably wondering about how I found this deal here because it was an off-market deal. So what ended up happening was one of the students in my inner circle, she was approached about this deal and it was too big for her to handle. So she let me know about it and I ended up paying her a finder's fee for this. But what it was was a local real estate agent who is in his 70s, but he still puts in the time and goes and contacts these owners of apartment buildings and storage facilities and asks them if they want to sell. So this person here, um, his business is actually next door. He said, sure, I'll sell it, but this is my price that I want to get for it. And this was back about six months ago. So the first person that was trying to close on it got all the way to the almost the finish line and at like the 11th hour, like three or four days before close, he's like, my money partner is bailing out and I don't have the down payment to do this one. Even though the appraisal came in, all the financing was lined up, everything was ready, ready, ready to go. And at that point, you know, what's this agent going to do? So he starts reaching out to his network, he contacts everybody, um, gets in touch with the person who ended up, uh, you know, wholesaling it to me. And I said, yeah, I got the cash to do this sort of thing and I'm not worried about it as long as all the numbers check out and I can do what I want with the facility, I'm ready to close on it. And uh, we had a conditional for a couple months because we wanted to have those meetings with the city, get our environmental assessment done and a few other things. And uh, we closed on it, no problem. So we closed on it in March. We've had it for about five, six weeks right now. We're already doing rent raises, we're already stabilizing on it, and we'll let you know why this is such a good deal and why we liked it uh, a little bit later on here in the video. All right, so you're probably wondering, like what are some other ways that we can increase the value of this property or this whole business here until we actually do the construction of the new units? Well, I'll give you one scenario, one example here of how we ninja'd the value of the property up more. So we had the person that was renting this unit here. He was paying the lowest rent in the, in the building, and you know the owner gave him a really great deal because he was you know, fell on hard times and needed a place to store some stuff and he actually worked for the owner. So I gave him a call. I believe that the last owner just may have not wanted to really rock the boat for anybody and raise those prices and have those conversations, right? So I just gave him a call and said, hey, under new ownership and the, the, proper, uh, the, the prices do need to go up right now. He was only paying $25 a month for that five by 10 unit. Market rents right now are almost three times that. So let's call it $75 a month. I said, you know, we have this unit right here that the owner has never rented. He never rented this for the whole time that he owned this facility uh, because this is where the hydro panel is in here. So I'll show you. I just said, look, as long as you leave me a foot of space to access the hydro panel, we'll rent this one to you for $50 a month. And he was okay with that. Um, maybe it's $45 a month or something like that. So he left me some access to the hydro panel. We're both happy. And this little move is gonna increase the rents in the building by about $600 per year. And we divide that by a 6% cap rate, that increases the value by $10,000. And everybody here is gonna be getting a rent raise of at least $10 a month. We're gonna do that in two stages, so do that twice over. That's a big play, okay? That gives us like $700 per month extra. Do that on a cap rate. That's how we're increasing this thing here by multiple six figures. All right, so if I'm gonna be giving everybody here a rent raise, you know, we have to be able to justify that somehow. So we are gonna be doing installing uh, remote cameras here. So we're gonna be able to have better, you know, hands on the security here as well. And we're also gonna be going with an automatic gate at the front here too. It's a pretty expensive investment, but me as the owner, it's gonna give me more control. If people are late on the rent or they just haven't paid their rent, um, their code to the gate won't be working anymore. And some of the newer storage facilities are very high tech. Literally, they can lock off any of the units here. So all the unit doors would have Wi-Fi locks on them. I'm not gonna go to that extent, but if I can control that front gate, it's also better for security. I can control what times of the days and nights people are allowed to come in and out at. And I can also make sure that I get my rent on time every single month. So hopefully you like this video here, friends. And um, I'm gonna ask you a huge favor. So if you like this and you wanna see more content like this, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. We're going for our thir first thousand subs here right now. And from there, it's gonna be many, many thousands. So depending on when you're watching this here, um, share it to your friends, drop a like, drop a comment. And uh, until next time, continue to buy real estate. There's always deals and there's always opportunity out there for people that know what they're doing here when it comes to buying assets.